GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Govi, a vernacular edutech brand, skilling everyone everywhere. So, welcome all of you to Galata Plus. I want to start with uh, Richie. Uh, so, so far I've seen four episodes and I loved every minute of it. Thank you. Uh, so, one thing I love about your work is that, uh, you know, there is a strong sense of uh, journalistic fervor and a bit of documentary realism. But at the same time, you don't forget, you know, the fact that it's entertainment too, right? In that respect, I kind of feel that your work is quite similar to that of Paul Greengrass, like ah, one of my favorite filmmakers. Magic words. <laughs> so, uh, what measures did you take this time to ensure that, uh, you know, you're doing something that, you know, that preserves the quality of what you did before, at the same time, giving something new to the viewers? That's a very long answer. Yeah. Um, but the short version of it is, the research has to be as, I suppose, uh, elaborate. And the process, the time, there's a process to the research, which yeah. is me doing the first round, then disseminating it for a few months into a timeline that makes sense, and then finding the gaps, and then going back, asking the questions, finding more branches out of the main um, trunk of the tree, pursuing those, meeting people, going back, sorting. It's the process. It takes time, a year, two years. Um, and then when I sort out the timeline and start to see the narrative um, ramifications of it, um, I need a six months to a year to, to make sure that this makes sense yeah, narratively yeah. Uh, and that this works, that it's interesting, um, compelling. And as I'm writing it, I'm writing it for me to direct. So I'm leaving notes in the script everywhere for me, which is not the version you see. I have two versions of the script. One is for me, one is for everyone else. Yeah. Oh. And that annotated version of, of a direct, my director's script has all the plans visually, which then I'll map out with Johan, in this case, cinematographer. Because my first love is cinema, it's, it's watching movies, it's the green grasses, it's the Michael Manns, it's that kind of oh, stuff I grew up with. Yeah, <laughs> at detailing yeah. that's rooted in truth, yeah. where, where, where there is so much work done into a, a single moment and, no, and, and, the, and there's no big deal made of it. It just carries on. In fact, there are almost muscular stories of ac action-based stories. And I find that that's the most compelling thing to be a part of, because you're thrown into somebody else's world and the contemplation has happened beforehand and now they're going. Yeah. Um, and then I try and push the envelope as much as I can within yeah. the, the within the resources I can I can uh, I can get. So it the, it's it's labor, <laughs> it's labor and contemplation. There's no shortcut to it. Yeah. It helps when you have talent that's so so good. I can't micromanage the talent. Yeah. So there has to be. Um, I have to choose the right people and then give them the the playing field for for making it work. Yeah. And then in the edit, I tighten, tighten, tighten. Everything has happened. Yeah. You dabbled in other genres before. Uh, as a filmmaker, do you find that you function, your st I mean, are you at your strongest when you're doing rooted, uh, you know, stories? So, it's, it's, it's hard to say because, for example, I did science fiction, you know, yeah, 10 years yeah, ago, yeah. 12 years ago, and I haven't done it since. I mean, I have, in fact, with one episode of an Apple series, but um, I'm different than I was 12 years ago as a human being. Yeah. I see the world in a different way. Yeah. Te technically, every cell is regenerated, so I literally am a different person. So... Um, I don't know where I would be back in that space, but right now I'm in the thriller genre space, and then not thriller for thriller's sake, as you know. Yeah. Um, I just find that it seems to be the most propulsive, compelling way to entice a viewer to give me seven hours or eight hours of their time. Yeah. yeah. Because there's so much noise out there, I have to earn their attention. Yeah. And they're willing to give it. Yeah. There's that equation. They're at least willing to press play. So I just need to figure out, you know, what is the nature of the sophisticated placebo we're talking about? and what's actually inside. Yeah, you also got a lot of uh, brilliant technicians from outside. Does it take a lot of convincing, you know, to your producers that, you know, this is the person I want to work with? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't, uh, I never ever ask anybody to oh. come on board something I'm doing. Never ask them. Okay. I just say, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Would you like to join the adventure? Okay. Even the nature of how, yeah. there's never an ask. Yeah, of course. Everyone has to find their own way yeah. to this. And yeah. if they do, they'll have their own motivations. Yeah. I don't want anyone doing it for me. Yeah. I may let them down one day. Yeah. I hope not. Yeah. But if everyone's going for their own reasons, that's when I find the rocket takes off based yeah. on everyone's fuel. Yeah, awesome. Roshan, <laughs> so whenever we had this conversations about cinema, there are yeah. times when, you know, there is a role that you didn't enjoy doing that I would have liked. Yeah. And vice versa, you know. Yeah. This time we seem to be on the same page. Oh, that I'm very relieved to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've had like really polar opposite opinions about yeah. many films, not just mine. Yeah. yeah. 
And, uh, you know, it's not a stereotypical geek that you're playing, you know, like how did you and Richie work together to, you know, make sure that it's a deviation from the norm? <laughs> so the real guy is there, yeah, yeah. you know, and he's, he's got nothing to do with the norm. Yeah. He's got no conventional DNA in his body. He's such an interesting guy. I've never met anyone like him. He's so exciting uh, to sort of just like get to know. And Richie's also done such a fabulous job of encapsulating all of his, I think, most core elements into the character that he's written. So even without the real person, Alan on paper is already a character that's very unconventional, very fresh and, you know, very, very distant from me as a person. Yeah. So it was an exciting journey. But having uh, the opportunity to meet the real person, his name is Joe Lewis, he's from Kanyarapalli. Uh, having the opportunity to meet him, uh, interact with him, get to know him, spend solid time, quality time with him, all of that also really helped. And then obviously like along the way in this like four months that we spent shooting it, there was always Richie to go back to because it can get, uh, this was my first series. Yeah. So, you know, spending that amount of time with the character and with so many facts to be followed in as far as the investigation part of the story goes, it's very easy to get lost also. Yeah. So for that there was Richie and then for like extra inspiration there was Joe Slow as the man and then obviously as like source material the script was there so yeah. I think that helped. You spent some considerable time in Mumbai and uh, now you're getting offers from you know Bollywood Anna. Do you some... feel that you finally <laughs> arrived? <laughs> oh god no. No I've, not uh, yet. I'm, I've been perennially in transit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eternally. Yeah, eternally in transit. Yeah. Maybe at some point I'll get somewhere. <laughs> yeah, nice. uh, I like how your character is, you know, going through a lot of inner turmoil, but outside is like very calm, very convincingly calm. Did you have any reference for that character or did you bring something of yourself into it? He's always there, like, end of the day, whatever happens in your life, you, as an actor, you always, it is something, the character always comes from you only, because, you know, this is not some, I always, feel and tell people that it's, some no, it's not some ghostly affair that you go into a character or a character comes into you. It is, it is that you, your, your other being, your other manifest, other things in your life. Because if I, if I nurture that, because see, I always tell people that I am, I am Ravan, I am Ram. So both can come from me only. Because I have to nurture that particular side of mine and it, it will come up eventually and that is the process I always try to be and then I always had a one point contact that's Richie Mehta yeah. because he is the creator, he is the writer, he is the director, he is the captain of the show, everything because like what else because I, you, if, if any question arises in your mind then you go to a writer or you go to, you refer the text or you go for the research material but here everything is a script. So that is the beauty of the project because you don't need to search anything else. Just go and ask Richie that I have this question. Answer me. So, so it is it is very unique actually. It's very unique. It's like it's like it's coming from you. It's a collaborative effort coming from you. But at the at the end of the day, you keep yourself behind, and the character comes first. Do you both find the series uh, format more uh, comfortable, like to flesh out your as opposed to the I had a great time shooting That's this not. one, but uh, I'm not really, I don't think I have an objective enough view of, you know, that comparison between series and cinema. I feel like essentially we're doing the same job. Yeah. And, you know, if, if the crew is great and your co-actors are great and you're excited by the material, then you'll be, uh, you'll still be having fun you know, over a longer period of time that a series generally demands. Yeah. I know there are films that have gone on for much longer, but as far as I'm concerned, this was the longest shoot I had done at that point. So, because I was excited and inspired every day, I really enjoyed it. Now, if that doesn't happen, be it a series or a film, it won't be an enjoyable experience. So. I, I, I always, I, I need to, sh I just came into my mind, like I, when I was in the drama school, my direct, the director of drama school, Mr. Kirti Jain, Ms. Kirti Jain, she used to come after every play and she used to ask Mazaya. Hmm. So I used to I used to think that she's the director of National School of Life. She, want, she should ask this kind of question, what was your process and mm -hmm. how, how you like that? She used to ask me simple question, Mazaya. 
But when I think in retrospect right now, yeah. that's so Correct. profound. Yeah. It's yeah. the right question. Yeah. Maza aya. Yeah. Whatever it is, it should maza aana chahiye. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise maza hi nahi hai. Matlab, you know. That's the yeah. Alia, yes. congrats on uh, Rocky or Annie. Thank you. I think uh, both darlings and poacher, you know, are something that you can be very proud of. And uh, you know, when it comes to storytelling, where there is a social cause involved. and uh, it's very important to tell them from a very genuine place right and that are driven by genuine intentions how conscious are you as a storyteller right now you know in this age of intense social media scrutiny mm. to you know make sure that you know th- about those genuine intentions um how conscious am i as a storyteller right now uh I think it's also about just what I naturally gravitate towards. Uh, whether it's a story as a actor, uh, whether it's a story as somebody who's creating a project as a producer, or a story that, like Poacher, where I come on board to extend my support and back it as an executive producer. Um, it's always been what my inner conscience or inner being is naturally gravitating towards, and I'd like to believe I'm a good human being. <laughs> uh, I'd like to believe I'm also a little bit. Um, sometimes it's not like you can only tell a very vanilla type of story where everything is lovely and everybody's perfect and all good things are happening to them but then there's no problem then there's no story to tell so of course you need to go through the beats of the story and sometimes they do good things sometimes they do bad things sometimes they're great people sometimes they're terrible people but what is the eventual story trying to tell and which what is the emotional force or what's driving the characters forward because poacher is based on true events and a part of the the lead characters and their maybe their arcs are fictionalized and what they go through maybe i mean as is factual that is entertaining you along the way but there is one key message and something that you are taking away from the story and from each of their journeys yeah. or some moment or some scene if you manage to give me all of that and entertain me for me that's a great story to yeah, tell yeah. so i'm looking for stories like that yeah. um as a as an actor and as a producer and um i you know when you because you mentioned social media and all because it is a reality and it is a media now which genuinely breaks everything down i think the internet also is uh, is very fair when things are good they give it yeah. goodness <laughs> when things are polarized i think polarized is great like yeah. it's conversation at the end of the day na So it's not like everybody's always going to be on the same page, yeah. and that's um, that's the power of us as you know as a as a medium. We can choose what we want to tell. Yeah, yeah. I found this to be a very informative series. You know, yeah. like there were places where I was like wondering which side to take. You know, like because absolutely, since- and that's what I'm saying. As a human being, you're responding because of the way the creator is telling the story, um, and that's on us. Like how yeah. we would like to perceive it. Yeah. So thank you so much all thank of you. you. No no thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. GT Holidays South India's number one travel brand. Govi a vernacular edutech brand skilling everyone everywhere.